Hello, Chair May, Commissioners, and Directors. I'm Jamin Grigg, the Southwest Region Senior Wildlife Biologist for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I'm excited to be able to present to you the draft herd management plans for the 14 mule deer herds located within the Southwest Region. This is a compilation of work that was led by the local wildlife biologists and area wildlife managers who developed these plans. On January 10th and 11th, we will join you at the Parks and Wildlife Commission meeting in Denver to answer any questions that you might have. The draft mule deer herd management plans we are presenting include the Young Compagre Plateau, D19, North Fork of the Gunnison River, D20, LaSalle, D23, Groundhog, D24, Sawatch, D26, Mesa Verde, D29, San Juan Basin, D30, Lower Rio Grande, D35, Upper Rio Grande, D36, Cimarron, D40, South Grand Mesa, D51, Hermosa, D52, Sand Dunes, D56, and the Gunnison Basin, D57 deer herds. For eight of these herds, CPW staff are proposing new management objectives, while for six of these herds, CPW staff are proposing extensions of previously approved objectives. Also of note, CPW staff are proposing to combine previous DAUs in the Gunnison Basin and the Eastern San Luis Valley to create new larger DAUs that are likely more biologically representative of animal movements and migration patterns and will allow us to better model and manage these populations. This is part one of a two-part series to present the draft Southwest Region Mule Deer Herd Management Plans. First, a little background on mule deer in Colorado and throughout the Rocky Mountain West. Colorado's mule deer populations are iconic and known throughout the world. As recently as the 1960s and 1970s, mule deer herds in Colorado likely numbered great, greater than 1 million animals. Since then, both in Colorado and across the Western states, mule deer populations have steadily declined due to habitat loss and other factors. And I will be discussing some alarming examples of that in the presentation of these draft plans. Today, Colorado maintains a mule deer herd of approximately 400,000 deer, far below historic estimates, but still the largest population in North America. In recent decades, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, in collaboration with federal and tribal partners, conservation organizations, and private landowners, has undertaken large research and conservation efforts to stabilize mule deer population declines and allow for population growth whenever possible. The herd management plans, or HMPs, I'm presenting today will guide management of the 14 mule deer herds occurring in the Southwest region for a 10 year period through 2020, excuse me, through 2034. In sum, these 14 deer herds contain an estimated 130,000 deer, representing about 33% of the statewide total population. Mule deer in Western Colorado face a number of common challenges, including human development and expanding that anthropogenic influence resulting in habitat loss and degradation, increasing recreation pressure and disease issues such as chronic wasting disease. In response to declining mule deer populations since the 1980s and 1990s, CPW has taken numerous steps in an attempt to stabilize populations and understand the factors impacting mule deer population dynamics. Mule deer have been one of the most studied species in wildlife conservation in recent decades. CPW has instituted mule deer monitoring studies in five herds across the state, including two in the Southwest region, to monitor annual adult doe survival, overwinter fawn survival, and cause specific mortality since 1998. The state has conducted numerous research studies to understand the complex relationships that habitat, predators, and weather have on mule deer population dynamics. CPW has also partnered on tens of thousands of acres of conservation easements to protect private lands from human development. The state also developed a West Slope mule deer strategy in 2014 to guide the stabilization and recovery of mule deer populations in Western Colorado. Following the guidance of the mule deer strategy, funds have been made available and matched to improve habitat quality across large areas of Western Colorado. CPW has prioritized habitat protection for mule deer, including important seasonal habitats and migration corridors. We've increased collaboration with Colorado Department of Transportation to reduce the impacts of highway traffic on mule deer survival, movements, and migration. 
and there have been large-scale planning efforts to reduce the impacts of increasing human recreation on mule deer behavior and survival, along with other wildlife. CPW has managed doe harvest and provided youth hunting opportunity. CPW has continued to maintain strong ungulate populations and disease monitoring programs while conducting applied research to improve management of mule deer populations. All of these efforts contribute greatly to the conservation of mule deer and other wildlife species. In 2018, CPW staff convened a chronic wasting disease advisory group to assist in developing the Colorado Chronic Wasting Disease Response Plan. The plan was developed to support the West Slope mule deer strategy with the primary objectives of managing chronic wasting disease, uh, chronic wasting disease prevalence and ungulates in Colorado, control the spread of infections into new herds, provide the public with science-based information regarding chronic wasting disease, and to maintain Colorado's robust and iconic ungulate populations. The plan provides seven recommendations and actions that could be used to control CWD prevalence. These actions are incorporated into the proposed herd management plans I'm presenting today. Several of the deer herds in Southwest Colorado have CWD prevalence rates in bucks greater than 5%, which is of concern to biologists and wildlife managers. I previously mentioned the five long-term mule deer monitoring areas across the state that CPW initiated beginning in 1998. These occur in the D7 White River Herd, the D9 Middle Park Herd, the D16 Upper Arkansas Valley Herd, and in the Southwest region, the D19 Uncompagre Plateau and D57 Gunnison Basin Herds. In these herds, CPW generally maintains a sample of at least 90 GPS collared does and 60 GPS collared fawns annually. These intensive mule deer monitoring areas allow CPW biologists to measure annual adult doe survival, overwinter fawn survival, body condition, cause specific mortality, deer movement and migration, and habitat use across the landscape in five representative herds across the state. These data are instrumental in population modeling and population estimation indicators of deer mortality, understanding how and when deer move and use the landscape, the importance, of, the importance and seasonality of various habitat types, and land use planning and conservation efforts. An important component of wildlife management and collaboration in Southwest Colorado is CPW's relationship with the Southern Ute and Ute Mountain Ute Indian tribes. Included within this is what's known as the Bruneau Agreement of 1873. In 1873, the Confederated Bands of Utes ceded a large portion of their 1868 reservation to the federal government. This ceded area, or Bruneau area, is approximately 3.7 million acres of the San Juan Mountain region of southwest Colorado and includes many of the herds we are discussing today. Included within the 1873 agreement was an important provision reserving for the Utes the right to hunt upon said land so long as the game lasts and the Indians are at peace with the white people, end quote. Despite the continued loss of lands, the corresponding reduction in the size of the Ute reservation and the relocation of certain Ute bands outside of Colorado, this reserved right within the Bruno area has remained undiminished to this day. Working in tandem with our tribal neighbors is of utmost importance to CPW as we cooperatively manage wildlife species, including deer migrating seasonally across political boundaries. Annual meetings, harvest reporting, and open communication have allowed CPW and the tribes to collaborate on population monitoring, radio collaring efforts, and habitat improvement and habitat connectivity efforts. Tribal lands provide vital winter ranges and other seasonally important habitats for a variety of wildlife, and the partnership between CPW and the tribes is vital for future, future wildlife conservation in Southwest Colorado. The management by objective approach CPW uses provides a data-driven process to achieve population objectives established for each data analysis unit, or DAU, established by the herd management plans, or HMP. A DAU is a geographic area that includes the year-round range of a big game herd. The DAU includes the area where most animals in a herd are born, live, and die. DAU boundaries are deline delineated to minimize the interchange of animals between adjacent DAUs. 
The geographic area may be divided into several game management units, or GMUs, to distribute hunters and harvest within a DAU. The primary purpose of HMPs is to establish population size and sex ratio objectives for each DAU. The HMP also describes the strategies and techniques that will be used to reach these objectives. During the HMP planning process, CPW solicits and collects public input through questionnaires, public meetings, and comments to CPW staff and the Parks and Wildlife Commission. CPW's mission as wildlife stewards is integrated with the concerns and ideas of various stakeholders including the State Land Board, the Bureau of Land Management, United States Forest Service, Habitat Partnership Program, agricultural producers, city and county governments, hunters, guides, outfitters, private landowners, local chambers of commerce, um, and the Southern Ute and Ute Mountain um, uh, Indian tribes, along with the general public. In preparing an HMP, Agency personnel attempt to balance the biological capabilities of the herd and its habitat with the public's demand for wildlife recreation opportunities. HMPs are approved by the Parks and Wildlife Commission and are reviewed and updated approximately every 10 years. The purpose of these HMPs I'm presenting today is to set the estimated population and observed buck ratio objectives for deer herds in Southwest Colorado from 2024 through 2034 with the expectation that they will be reviewed and updated in 2034. Local CPW staff engage in, in an extensive public process in developing herd management plans and proposed herd objectives. This generally includes hunter surveys, landowner surveys, in-person and or virtual public meetings, sports persons roundtable meetings, engagement with local governments such as county commissioners, engagement with local stakeholder groups and habitat partnership program committees, and engagement and solic solicitation for comment from federal land management agencies and, tr and tribal governments. Generally, multiple possible herd management objectives are considered and vetted prior to the preferred alternative being selected and presented to the Parks and Wildlife Commission. Draft herd management plans are also posted on the CPW website for a 30-day public comment period generally accompanied by CPW press releases. A summary of the public engagement process for each herd can be found in the appendices of the draft plans you have received. For six of these draft herd management plans, CPW staff are asking the Parks and Wildlife Commission to extend previously approved management objectives, seen in white in this table. For eight of the draft plans, CPW staff are proposing new management objectives highlighted in gray in this table. As I mentioned earlier, the D-56 Sand Dunes and D-57 Gunnison Basin plans propose combining multiple previous DAUs to form new DAUs covering larger geographic areas that are likely more biologic biologically realistic and should allow for better population modeling and consistent management. I'll now give a brief overview of each of these 14 herds and the management objectives we are proposing in these new herd management plans. We will be happy to answer any questions you might have at the January Parks and Wildlife Commission meeting in Denver. This concludes part one of the Southwest Mule Deer Herd Management Plans presentation. Thank you.